Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives. Uh, still on our revisions uh, for mathematics and four, working on the August 2023 exam. Uh, we are going to be focusing on question number two, which was the application of the Kramer's rule and also the application of uh, complex numbers. So I would like you guys to be part of the membership family so that if you join the membership, you are going to have access to unlimited videos in actual sense. Uh, if you have to check here, we have got uh, this part of our, uh, this is the home page of our channel, and so African Motives. Thank you guys for being part of the subscribers. If you have subscribed, uh, thank you so much. So if you can click here, you have the access to join in this case so that uh, you have got uh, uh, so many uh, approaches that you can choose the basic, the medium, uh, you can choose the gigantic, you can choose the ultimate, uh, you can choose the all-in-one, which gives you a course. So this one, it gives you a course. You get a full course for a certain uh, part that you want to know everything about what you need in your syllabus. Uh, that's a full course for this one, uh, the uh, all-in-one in this case. All right, so uh, if you have to check the question number one is on the membership. Uh, this is a thanks to our members. If you're part of the members and you're also watching this video, I want to thank you guys for being uh, our members. You're supporting us to grow the channel. So if you click this, you will see that it's written members only content. In this case, this is to show you that it's for those who have the member. And for you to access this, you have to join the membership by just click, clicking the join. Then you're going to choose any of the membership that is there. But if you join this, the all in one, you have to contact me so that I work on it. I work on your course so that you work. I work on everything that you need to know so that you'll be able to prepare for your exams. So I'm not going to waste much of your time, guys. Let us quickly rush through the questions so that we'll see how we're supposed to attempt these typical questions. So any part you can join from this, you can join from any video, you can join from here. There are so many ways. Then you just have to follow the steps that are given on that uh, join section. All right, guys. So like I said, let us quickly brush through our questions and see how we're supposed to attempt uh, these typical questions. That is question number two, the application or solving of uh, the, un uh, the unknown current three by or with the aid of the Kramer's rule in this case, right? That is 10 marks for that, okay? So we are not gonna waste much time. Uh, I'm going to rewrite this so that we can work it uh, separately. I think that's gonna be the best. Let us just uh, work this on uh, on another side, right? So let's see what we're gonna do here. Let us just work it aside. I think this can help us, guys. So that was our question two, which is 2.1 where we are given uh, 3i1, in this case, minus uh, 2i2, plus 4i3, which was equal to 2. And uh, also, we are given the second equation uh, that was current 1 uh, plus 3i2, uh, minus 6i3, which was equal to 8, in this case. And uh, the third one, which is 2i1, minus i2, minus uh, two i three, which was equal to zero, All right? So these were the equations that were given here. Then now uh, we are asked to find i three with the aid of what? The Kramer's rule in this case, we are working with the Kramer's rule. Remember I said from the introduction of our determinants, if you watch the video on the determinants, you can use the Kramer's rule to determine an unknown value. Uh, if you are to calculate I3, it means we have to find the determinant with respect to I3 and also the determinant with respect to uh, the constant, uh, just referring to constant in this case, which you can write maybe as uh, a zero if you want, that is uh, referring to the, to the constant in this case. Then I3 is the current that you are focusing on, uh, on this current here. So in how do you find the determinant of uh, I3 in this case from this part, all right. So in order for you to have the determinant of current I3, you are going to close this part of I3. Then you replace with the constants in this case. 
you are going to close this part, you replace it with the constants. So meaning to say here, we are going here, there's a number that is there, which is one. So let us just have this, there's a one here. Here it's minus one. So this part, these numbers that we see here, we are going to replace everything or the whole of this section with the constants in this case, which is at this constant. So meaning to say this part you're going to write as it is the numbers giving you a matrix is three, one, and two. So we've got three, one, and two. Then here it's negative two, positive three, and negative one. So that's negative two, uh, positive three, negative one. You are taking the coefficients. So in place of I3, that's where you're going to substitute the numbers two, eight, and zero. So you're gonna have two, eight, and zero, which are the constants in this case. This is the determinant with respect to I3. Then uh, the determinant with respect to the constants in this case, meaning to say we're just working with this part as it is, you are not substituting this constant, you're just taking everything on the left-hand side. So that's three, one, two. So you're gonna have three, one, two in this case. And that's negative two, three, negative one. So you've got negative two, positive three, negative one. And you've got four, negative six, negative two. So you've got positive four, negative six, negative two. So that is our determinant of the constants. That is the only part that we did. You do not need to find for current, uh, I mean for I1 or for I2. You are focusing on what you're asked to calculate. So you just focus on that and that of the constants. So how do you find the determinant of a three by three matrix in this case? Remember, considering our matrix of signs, we've got plus, minus, minus, uh, plus, minus, plus, minus, minus, uh, a plus, a minus, and so on. So you're going to choose the, the, the row or column of your choice. In this case, let us just say, I choose to work with this column. It means, these signs that are here, they are going to affect this column. This is the column that is going to be affected. If we choose this, uh, I mean, this row that we are having, I'm now saying a column, this is a row. If you choose this column, this one, it means you are going to affect this column. It's up to you to choose which part of your uh, a row or column that you want to use, but you're going to obtain the same answer in this case. So this is what you're going to have. Uh, the determinant in this case is going to be plus is going to affect three. So it's going to be plus times three, which is a plus three. So three when multiplied by a plus is just a plus in this case, all right? Then you'll find the determinant of the two by two matrix that you obtain after you close the, uh, the row that is closed and also the column where there is what? where there's three. So you're going to close this column, uh, meaning to say you remain with this part here. If we close the row where there's three and also the column where there is three, you're going to remain with uh, these numbers here. You're going to remain with three, eight minus one and zero because you've closed this part. So this is the remaining part that you're going to have, which is uh, three, eight, negative one, zero. All right, you move on to negative two negative two affected by this sign. It's negative and negative. So it is going to be a positive two. That's how you affect with the sign. So the sign multiplies the number. Then you find the determinant of the two by two matrix that you are going to obtain if you close two uh, minus two in this row and also in this column. If we close this part, what is going to remain? You're going to remain with one, eight, two and zero. So that is the part that you're going to use in this case. So like I said, if you close this part, you are going to remain with what? You're going to remain with this because we've closed this part here. So we're going to remain with one. Here we are going to have eight. Here we are going to have two. And here we are going to have zero. All right, two affected by a plus. So it's plus times two, which is a plus. So this one is just gonna be a plus two. We find the determinant that corresponds after we close the row where there is this two and also the column where there is this two. So as you can see, you're going to remain with this part here as a two by two matrix. So that's the one that you're going to take because you've closed this part. So you're going to remain with this part here. All right, so that's uh, one, three, uh, two, and negative one. That's it. So you have to determine 
your determinant in this case. So the determinant, uh, it, like I said, it's up to you, my, uh, like which part are you going to choose? If you have chosen this row, then this is how you're going to have, but whatever part that you're going to choose, whether it's a column or any other row of issues, you are supposed to have the same answer on them uh, at the end. You're supposed to have the same uh, determinant. We are supposed to have the same uh, determinant at the end. All right, so let us simplify and see what you're going to have. So here, we are now referring to a two by two matrix. Remember, on a two by two matrix, the determinant is simply the product of the major diagonal minus the product of the minor. It's A times D minus B times C. So you're simply multiplying these two. We subtract to the product of these two. The major diagonal minus the minor diagonal. So that's it. So here there is a three. So you're going to have three into. We multiply these two here. So let me just show you an example. Then the rest, we can just write them down. All right, so let us save it this way. So we're going to have three times zero in the major diagonal. So that's three times as zero in this case, minus eight and negative one. So it's gonna be bracket eight times a negative one in this case like this. So this is going to give us a positive eight. So we're going to have a positive eight, then here plus two, we do the same uh, concept or we do the same thing, just like uh, what I've indicated on the last part. So meaning to say, we're gonna multiply these two, one and zero minus eight times two. So there you are going to obtain uh, negative 16. All right, you do the same on this part. You multiply these two, then you subtract to these two. So you're going to have two times uh, negative seven. So that was going to be the determinant uh, with respect to I3. And this is going to give us uh, negative 22 if you combine everything uh, from our calculator. So having the same uh, concept that we used for I3, we are going to have the same thing to calculate the determinant of the constants in this case. So our determinant for the constants is going to be, we choose again, any row or column. So I'm just gonna use the same concept, the first row. So I'm gonna take plus, minus, and plus. So these are the signs that I'm going to take in the, in the first row. So I'm going to choose the first row here. So that means our determinant for the constants is gonna be three multiplied by a plus. So plus times three, that's a plus. So it's gonna be three, the determinant of, you determine the determinant after closing the row where there is three and also the column where there is this three. So as you can see, we are going to remain with this section here. This is the section that is gonna remain of uh, three, uh, negative six, negative one, and negative two. All right, we move on to negative two. So it's negative two here and a negative, 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 a positive. So that will be positive two. The determinant of, we close the column where there is a negative two here. So you're gonna remain with one, uh, negative six, two, and negative two. All right, plus, uh, I mean the four, affected by a plus, so it's gonna be a plus. So it will be plus four, the determinant of, we close the column also where there is this four. So as you can see, we are going to remain with this part here. So that will be one, three, uh, two, and negative one. So that's it, guys. You determine your determinant just like the previous part. We are going to multiply the major diagonal, these two numbers, uh, that's three and negative two, minus negative six times negative one. So it's three by two, negative two, minus, you multiply this in a bracket. So that's the concept you are going to obtain uh, in this case, that will be a negative 12. So this will be negative 12 plus, you do the same thing, uh, major diagonal, minor diagonal, this will be a positive 10 plus four into, you do the same thing, the major diagonal of one and negative one, then three and uh, two, you are going to obtain uh, a negative uh, seven in this case, All right? So this will be a negative seven. So that is going to be determinant of the constants, which is going to be negative 44. So like I said, in order for us to determine or in order for us to obtain the current I3 from our formula, in this case, this current I3 is the determinant with respect to that current over the determinant with respect to the constants, which is negative uh, 
44. So that means we can obtain our I3 in this case. That's uh, the determinant with the respect to I3 over the determinant uh, with the respect to the constant. All right, so it's just a substitution. Uh, here we got uh, negative 22. For the constants, we get uh, negative 44. So that's it on your calculator. Uh, this is going to give us a half. So it means I3 is going to be one over two, or that's 0 0.5 as a decimal. So that is what we're going to have at the end. So as you can see, uh, it's just an application that we talked about before from our Kremers rule application of determinants. Uh, make sure that you also watch the video on the introduction where we talked about uh, the determinants, uh, finding determinants of uh, three by three, matrices and so forth, it helps you to understand much on this simplification that we are having. So that was 10 marks, just like that. All right, let us see question 2.2. Question 2.2, it's a complex number uh, question where we are given the complex number set is given as uh, uh, negative one, negative J4. All right, calculate the modulus and the argument of that, show all steps, right? So we need the modulus and the argument. It is best because uh, of the, the argument that we are having, it is best for us to have a diagram so that we properly see where our argument is going to lie, where exactly our argument is going to, to lie. All right, the other thing also on your calculator, this is another thing that you can also just do to, uh, to simplify, then you prove your answer by calculation. You want to convert a, a rectangular format to a polar form. That's where we have got modulus and argument. Remember, in polar form, we've got R angle of theta like this, where this is the modulus and this is the argument. So your calculator can convert this. So you just use it now. So it's shift, you convert to polar form, you press this or like this, right? You write this, negative one, you separate by the comma here. So it's shift, this one. So that's negative four. So you're gonna have negative four like this. Close the bracket is equal to, so it gives you the value of R in this case, which is uh, uh, 4, 1, 2, and so on and so on. And also the value of theta, which is uh, minus 104, uh, something like that, all right? That is the angle theta. I'm gonna explain about that in actual sense, what the calculator does and what you're supposed to get in the actual sense. So you are working something that you already have at the value of R and the value of theta. You're working something, that you already have, but how is it that you're supposed to do? Because you're supposed to show the steps. The calculator does not show the steps. It just give us an answer, all right. So from our account diagram concept, we understand that uh, here we've got the real and we've got the imaginary. Here we've got the real and we've got the imaginary, the J part. So on our account diagram, we've got something of this nature here whereby this is our real axis and this is our imaginary axis, the one that has got a J. So if we are to see which quadrant was going to fall this complex number set, which is negative one, negative J4. Negative one, it means our real, it's a negative, it's in this quadrant, uh, it's this side, then minus J4, it means we are down here because this is positive, negative, positive, negative. So we're going to have our diagram in this quadrant where this is negative one, this is negative J4. So you're going to have something of this nature, right? The real part being negative one, the imaginary part being a negative J4 like this. So this is your R, which is the resultant in this case. Uh, that is the, 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 the magnitude in this case from the concept of R theta and theta is the argument. Take note from the diagram, do not confuse guys. In within the diagram here, in within your diagram, inside of the triangle, this is not your argument, this is wrong. This is a reference angle that you're going to use that you can just name is as alpha. Not to say that is your argument, no. The argument is the angle that you're going to take from the positive real axis from the positive real axis to this line. So it's either we are going to take this angle in this direction like this. This is the angle that you're going to take, which is our theta. Or we are going to take our theta in this direction like this way. This is what you're going to have at the end. 
So it's either if you are taking this in the anti-clockwise direction, our theta is going to be 180 degrees plus alpha. 180 degrees plus alpha, you have to calculate alpha. If you were to take your theta this direction, your theta from this direction, it was going to be alpha minus 180. All right, so these guys, you have to be careful. That's your, your argument, not the angle inside here. This is just a reference angle that you are considering. The argument is always taken from the positive horizontal axis, from the positive real axis, either in the anti-clockwise or in the, in the clockwise direction. So that is the consideration. In the clockwise direction, your angle is going to be negative. In the anti-clockwise direction, your angle is going to be positive. I explained that in the trigonometry video. So make sure that you watch that, the trigonometry, so that you understand. All right, so anyways, let us quickly find our solutions. R in this case, as we know that R is equal to the square root of uh, negative one from our Pythagoras theorem concept. So that's negative one squared plus uh, negative four squared. All right, so R in this case is going to give us uh, the square root of one uh, squared. So that's negative one squared, which is same as one in this case, all right, plus uh, negative four squared. So it's gonna be a negative four like this squared, all right? So that was going to give us the square root of uh, 70 in this case. All right, so I did not show my calculator. Let me show the calculator, sorry for that guys. All right, here, yeah. so we're gonna have uh, this, like I said here, is same as a negative one, does not even affect this one. You can just have even a negative one like this in bracket. So this is gonna give us square root of six, uh, 17 or 4,123, which is the same value that we saw on the previous case. So this is the square root of 17. I'm just gonna store this value. Uh, I want to prove something at the end. Let me just store my value so that we use accurate values to prove back that we are going to have the same thing here. All right, so that is it. Then we move on to the theta in this case, which is our reference. We are supposed to, I mean, which is our argument in this case. So this is the magnitude or the resultant, Then we need the argument. So theta being the argument can be obtained from these two formulas, uh, from these two, but you have to calculate alpha, which is the reference angle inside of the what? the triangle, all right, from which concept we've got the opposite and adjacent. So it means uh, we're gonna use the tan of theta. So theta alpha is going to be actan opposite, which is negative four over the adjacent. So the sign that we see here is not important. The sign is just there to indicate the quadrant, where, which quadrant is it going to fall? So the sign do not use it here on the reference angle. So that's our alpha is going to be actan four in this case. All right, so let us check on our calculator what's gonna happen here. That's shift uh, tan four like this. So that's actan four, which is gonna be 75, uh, nine six four. All right, so that's uh, 75, nine six four degrees. All right, so like I said, I'm just gonna need to store these values to use actual values uh, for the sake of revision. Uh, so that we obtain the exact answers in this case uh, when we are proving this back. So this is what we are going to have uh, representing alpha, not theta, the argument. In order for us to have the argument, like I said, it's either you're going to take from this way or you're going to take from this one. If you were to take positive angle, it was going to be 180 degrees plus 75,964 degrees, which was going to give us 255, 964 degrees. Or you are going to have your argument as uh, theta is equal to alpha minus 18, which is our alpha. In this case, it's 75,964 degrees minus 180 degrees. So if we subtract uh, 180 degrees, we are going to obtain a negative angle. And that's it because we are going in the clockwise direction. Our angle is supposed to be a negative. That's 104 comma zero three six. If you check, that was the angle that we were given before. If we are to check here on our conversion that we did, remember we converted this and I said just say put convert to polar form, which is shift polar form. Sorry. Uh, that's a shift here. 
polar form, remember it was given as um, negative one, negative four. All right, so let us press this negative one, negative four. Okay, so that was uh, negative one. Uh, separate this, uh, that's a negative four in this case. All right, so it's gonna give us our answer in polar form, four comma one, two, three, which is the square root of 17 and the theta, which is negative 104, 0, uh, 3, which is the angle here, which is the same as the angle that we are obtaining here. Like I said, these two, they are the same. So it's either you are going to have your answer as your argument, it's either you're going to give your answer as this, or you're going to have your answer as this. It's just one and the same thing, all right? So it's up to you, which one are you going to choose? All right, so that was uh, our question, just to find uh the argument uh the modulus and the argument all right which is the modulus is the magnitude in this case all right then express uh in polar form this z that we have they are asking us to express in polar form remember finding the argument uh finding the modulus and the argument is actually a conversion that we are simply making to a polar form because we know that in polar form our z is given as r angle of theta like this. So Z is going to be R, which is um, the modulus or the magnitude of uh, square root of 17 angle of theta. So it's either you're gonna take this or you're going to take this, which is 255 comma 964, or you're going to write it as uh, the square root of 17, then the angle being negative 104 comma 036 degrees, it's up to you or you can even write in terms of cis theta. Here you can just use uh, cis like this, or you can even write it in the form of R uh, cos of theta plus J sine of theta, which means our Z is going to be R in this case, which is the square root of 17 into the cosine of theta. You're gonna use this theta, or you're going to use this theta, which is 256 comma 964 degrees, plus j uh, sine theta, which is the same theta that you wrote in the first place, 255, not 256, but this is 255. So it's going to be 255 comma uh, 964 degrees. All right, so, so that's the condition. That's the condition that you might have your answers presented as long you are dealing or you are working with the polar form. So in actual sense, uh, that is the idea there, that is the idea. And if you are to check this, if you are to use actual values, remember, we are supposed to have the same answer, minus one, minus J4. Remember that was the one that we had in rectangular form. So I want to use actual values and, and uh, show you this part that I'm, uh, what I'm trying to say. Let me show you this screen here, remember, uh, here, uh, it's only that I, uh, I stored only, let me say, uh, recall A like this, I have this value. I need to use this actual value, this one. So remember it was uh, actan, uh, it was actan four, uh, sorry, actan, we need to shift it there. Shift tan four, that was um, the angle that we are going to obtain. Sorry, I need this part. Sorry for this, guys. All right, I need this part. Where am I going? Actan four, like this. So that was the value. Then we added 180 on the other one, we subtracted. So I'm just going to add 180 like this, which was 255, comma, which is this value. So I want to use the actual value and prove this to you, what you're supposed to get. Okay, so this is our angle. I stored this value at B. It means that if you are to say square root of 17 cos this value, you must obtain exactly negative one. All right, so this is uh, the square root of 17 times cos the angle that we stored at B. In this case, we must obtain exactly negative one, which is this one. The same thing if we multiply square root of 17 and the sine of the angle, we must obtain negative four. So it's going to be. Uh, the square root of 17. So that's the square root of 17 times the sine of the angle, which is the, the angle that we stored here. We are going to obtain negative four. That's exactly what we have. So it means a conversion to polar form is the same 
part that we had in rectangular form. If you convert back, you must obtain exactly the same thing. But here you are not going to have the exactly the same thing because these are rounded off figures. So whatever that you round off, it affects the resultant at the end. So you won't be able to properly uh, prove. So that was the condition. Let us check. Um, all right, 2.3, uh, which is the last part of our question there. We are given to simplify. Uh, that is uh, j to the exponent of 4, the square root of j to the exponent of 4 minus j to the exponent of 3, that is 2.3. There are so many ways that we can have. Remember, the square root of j to the exponent of 4 is j squared, a square root. So there are two of them, so it's just like j squared times j squared. So the square root is going to give us j squared, or you can say j to the exponent of a half to remove the square root. So that is going to give us j squared minus j to the exponent of three. All right, so here we've got two ways that we can solve from this. It's either you are going to factor out j squared because j squared is common here. So we can factor out uh, j squared like this, which is going to give us j squared divided by j squared, that is a one, minus j to the exponent of three divided by j squared. There are three of them. So if we divide, we are going to be left with one j in this case. But we know or we understand that j squared is equal to negative 1. So wherever we see a j squared, we are going to have a negative 1. So it's going to be negative 1 into 1 minus j. So let us expand negative 1 times 1. That's negative 1. Negative 1 and a negative is going to give us a positive j. So that was going to be our answer. Or if we were to use this concept here that uh, we have got j squared, minus j to the exponent of three. We just simplify each separately. j squared, it's negative one, minus j to the exponent of three. If we are to write this in terms of j squared, it is going to be j squared times a j. We are obtaining the same j uh, to the exponent of three. If this is j squared, we multiply to a j. But we know that j squared is minus one. So it's going to be minus one, minus, j squared, which is minus one times j. So we are now having minus one minus times minus, which is a positive. So it is going to be minus one plus j, which is the same as this answer. So that is how you're supposed to simplify this question. You've got three marks for that. So these are the typical questions that we had. So like I said in the previous case, that uh, let us try by all means guys to be part of the membership family uh, so that we've got access to infinity uh, learning, infinity learning. We're gonna learn as much as we can as we are part of the membership classes. Uh, this helps you to access anything. If you join our membership, you're gonna have unlimited learning. So just click any of the videos that are on the membership. Once you click that video, it takes you direct to the steps that are needed in order for you to, to join, in order for you to access that video. Uh, or in order for you to play the video that you are required to join uh, by choosing any approach that you want, uh, uh, that you are flexible with, then follow the stages that are going to, or the steps that you are going to require. In this case, you will be asked uh, of the steps that you're going to have. In this case, uh, everything. So it's up to you to choose uh, your, your flexible plan choose a flexible plan, then after choosing your flexible plan, uh, let me know about your membership joining so that you can be able to communicate uh, uh, on our uh, on the topics to be done. So as you can check here, we've got our contact. So you can contact me uh, so that we can be able to work on the areas that you joined for. So that is how easy uh, it is, just like that. So guys, that's it from Mason African Motives, till we meet again.